Hello, everybody. My guest today is Brighton Shang. He's the founder and CEO of Aquabyte, a Silicon Valley and Norway-based venture-backed company applying machine learning and computer vision to aquaculture, fish farming for biomass estimation, sea lice counting, and feed optimization and formulation. Brighton was named to the 2019 Forbes 30 Under 30 in machine uh, manufacturing and industry. All right, Brighton, you ready to take us to the top? Absolutely. How do you land in this niche? That's my biggest question. It's a bit of a... Uh, uh, Non-direct story. I had, as I had studied machine learning at Princeton and had worked in a number of machine learning companies in the past. My, my first company was an algorithmic trading firm, so sort of similar to Flash Boys. We were buying and selling stocks automatedly. Then I was involved in another company, uh, a series of startups, and the last company I was involved with. We were doing computer vision modeling on cancer tissues. That that company ended up going through the Y Combinator program, moved out here from New York, and then ended up incubating this company out of a VC firm out here. The whole idea for aquaculture came out of my old co-founder, one of his business school classmates had owned a sea bass farm in Mexico, and it had been really interesting to me and ended up traveling all around and everyone kept on talking about Norwegian salmon and, and long story short, ended up living in Norway for a couple of months with the fish farmers investigating the industry. They have an amazing industry out there, but then developing this thesis of being able to use similar machine learning, computer vision technologies, putting a camera in the fish pen and being able to monitor a lot of different things. So. Mm-hmm. Over time, just le- learned a lot more about it. And so what's the model today? Is it a pure play SaaS kind of revenue stream? So we have a camera. The, the camera goes in the fish pen. From that, using computer vision, we can do a number of interesting things. We can determine the weight of the fish, the number of sea lice, as you mentioned, and we do sell it as a monthly subscription feed to these farms. What's the fee, to, uh, I guess on average, just the software component of this, what's the average customer paying per month or per year to use the tech? It's it's in the hundreds of thousands uh, for, for like an entire farm. Um, and it, it like it, it, we, we charge by the pen, each, each fish pen. Okay, so I guess, um, totally understand that that's what you price against. But what I'm actually asking is the average kind of how many pens on average, you know, per, you know, company you're selling to. So are we talking like hundred thousand dollar average kind of annual accounts for five pens or does something different? Uh, something in like the hundred to $200,000 range for an average farm. Okay. And the average farm has how many pens? Uh, four to six pens. Okay. Four to six pens. Very good. And get, just help my audience visualize that. So how big is a pen? Is it like the size of a typical commercial swimming pool or? So you can take a 737 plane, dangle it by the nose and completely submerge it in one of these pens. So we're talking about the diameter of a pen being the size of half a football field. That's huge. Massive. How many, so for a four to, so, okay, for one pen, how many pieces of hardware, these these kind of cameras, do they have to put in that one tank? It's a single camera. Okay. And the camera navigates throughout the pen watching the fish. So it's almost like when I was growing up and had a pool and we had this little automated thing that cleaned the bottom of our pool that just moved around in the mornings like a little alien. You kind of work like that. Yeah, something like that. Okay. So what- it's on a it's on a rope winch system and the the winch moves it all throughout the pen. That's pretty cool. Okay, so I'm, I'm always fascinated by IoT plus software plays, especially in niche verticals. I've, I've seen a lot of kind of ad tech doing this where there's like orbs and feed grain relative to like how much cows are eating or, you know, you know, sensors on the back of Target dumpsters and Walmart dumpsters to help the, you know, dumpster people know when to come pick up things like that. And I'm always fascinated by how people are subsidizing the hardware to get as close to free to their customer so that they can drive more growth. So I'm curious about that for you. How do you handle the cost structure of the physical installation? The camera is actually quite expensive. Now, the farmers, they already have cameras in the pens, not as sophisticated as the ones we have, but they're already used to having that type of hardware. What we do is we're, we're actually a pure play software company in that we partner with these camera manufacturers. So from a farm's perspective, they're buying a complete package of the software plus the camera. 
on the back end, we're actually passing part of that cost directly to the hardware manufacturer. And that's not even that, that, that we're, we're not even a part of that. So we're not buying the camera and reselling it on a SaaS model. They're, they, they just buy that separately. What's it cost? It's, it's like 20 to 30,000 okay, for t- one of these cameras. We'll call it $20,000 for one of these cameras. And so what you're saying is you will essentially sell your software. So your sales sound something like this. Hey, farmer with four to six pens, it's going to be between 100000 and $200,000 per year for the software. And on top of that, you need one camera per pen. They're 20 grand a pop. You have four pens. It's another 80 grand. So they're looking essentially at showing out at least 180 grand for the 80 on the hardware plus 100 on the software first year. Right. But then the, these cameras, they, they last for five, six years. And also they already have cameras in the pen. So they, they can potentially retrofit their camera, upgrade it. And, and so they don't have to buy a completely new camera. Is that a, like your salespeople or you when you're going out and selling this, is that $20,000 per camera cost a big friction point? Have you have you lost deals because they don't want to pay for that hardware? No, I think that they're the actually ironically the farmers they're more used to buying hardware than software and so they'd rather pay a large amount for the hardware and a less amount for the software because they're just not used to that. They're 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 used to buying nets and barges and the the bigger the better not not so much <laughs> software. And so they're not used to the sort of SaaS model. All right, and put all this on a timeline for me when did you launch so we, I started the company two years ago. We started selling at the beginning of this year. Okay. And I always like to ask this question. So how much did you sink into your MVP right before your first dollar of revenue? We're talking a hundred grand, a million or more. Probably uh, one to $2 million. Part of this is that we raised a three and a half million dollar seed round. We, we just closed a Ten million dollar Series A, so thirteen point five total. Right. Why do you need the extra ten? So that ten million dollars we just raised is now going to be used to accelerate our go to market, and as well as our international plans. So Alcultra is fairly international, starting in Norway, expanding to other countries, and then to build out the next couple products. Brighton, do you have a good sense? So to get a new hundred thousand dollar, you know, or two hundred thousand dollar per year customer, year one, are you comfortable spending that whole first year ACV to get the customer, or what payback period are you optimizing for currently? So because we don't take the ca- the camera on our books, from a financials perspective, we're making money from day one because we're selling the software. That said, um, the, the aquaculture in the very interesting. It's not a traditional um, industry where you, you have to do the complicated LTV to CAC calculation. A lot of the industry is very word of mouth. And so we know a lot of these farmers personally, and we're selling to them based on one-on-one relationships. And, and, and so we, we can acquire a customer on the order of a month or two because we've been chatting with them over the past, past year versus of being a long sales. So what is that? Like you're talking like maybe twenty, thirty thousand dollars that covers flight costs, maybe a meal here or there, past meetings, and, and that's essentially what you cost to get a new customer? Well, so I, so actually, uh, even though I'm based in San Francisco, most of our team is in Bergen, Norway. And so we have local s- salespeople there that already have relationships with the farms so I, I, I think it's even less than that. Well, Brian, I mean, just the reason I'm asking is I'm talking just because I'm talking fully weighted CACs. So you just mentioned salespeople. I mean, there's a commission structure built in there. Otherwise, they wouldn't be called a salesperson and they'd be at another company where they can earn more money. Right. So, you, I mean, you have modeled some sort of CAC, even though if you're not doing any direct paid, like, you know, you're not finding fishermen on Facebook ads. Right. So. So, I mean, are you generally talking like a four month payback on these things or, or 12 months or more? Uh. If I had to just estimate off the top of my head, it's probably a couple, couple months. Okay. Like but definitely that less than a year, you think? Right. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, and most of that, it sounds like is going to go towards actually the salesperson compensation and maybe a flight here or there. Right. Ma- mainly travel costs and uh, yeah. Yeah. Having our sales team. 
Very cool. Okay, so 2017, you start, you know, building this thing. You put in one or two million to get the MVP, and then now today, 20 early 2019, you started kind of your first sales, onboarding your first customers. Over the past six to seven months, how many customers total have you scaled to? So we just started selling. We're still in the R and D phase and uh, transitioning to scaling. So right now we have three customers. Okay. And. Our, why do you, by the way, why do you hedge that so much? It's almost like, oh my gosh, I don't want to share. We only have three, but like you got to start somewhere and three is a great number to start. Why not? Well, I think the the thing is there's a lot of demand for this product. Part of it is that we've been throttling the amount of customers we have. Actually, in the next month or two, we're going to go to eight customers. And then by the end of the year, we want to have almost a hundred of these pens deployed. Yeah. So what does that mean in terms of revenue? What's your revenue target by the end of this year in terms of run rate? I think we're looking between three to five. Okay. And does that feel realistic or like a stretch goal? I think that's realistic. It depends on our ability to deliver on the technology. Yeah. And it sounds like today, if you got three customers and the minimum ACV is called a hundred grand, I mean, you're doing like 30 grand or something like that per month right now. Yeah. So it's, it's not all immediate. Like there's a trial period and then they convert, but, but yes, that like when, once they convert, yeah. So let me ask you a question. When you model, and maybe you don't model this, but when you model lifetime value early on on a company like this, do you do you have an idea of what you think a customer is worth to you over the life? That's an interesting question. Uh, certainly, I mean, I I I think uh, I mean we we have a model where we've modeled out revenue and churn and, and things like that, um, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's something I, I haven't extensively modeled um, to, to give a reasonable, reasonable answer on that. Yeah, and I mean, the re- the reason I'm asking is because I've seen so many of these hardware companies where they, they actually model the software LTV, and it actually is so worth it for them to even give away a $20,000 piece of hardware for free right? Just to grow distribution super fast uh, because they know the lifetime values make sense. Now you have to bridge the cash gap on that. You raved capital. It sounds like to, you know, do that partly, but I'm just curious if you ever think about that. No, I think that's a good point. I mean, I, 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 I see your point and I think uh, it, it, it could be a similar thing here. I think it only uh, works though, if it's a land grab situation, right? It worked for bird and lime because that is truly a land grab situation. Get more scooters out, give the hardware away essentially free. Uh, but do you, are you competing with anyone else? Is there a land grab for cameras and well, fish tanks? Say the, the, the other thing is, I mean, we're, we're in an industry like it's all, it's like once you get the, once you get a cable at your home, you're not going to get a second cable provider. And so it's a similar thing. Once you put a camera in a pen, you're not getting a second camera in the pen. So it is a so, land grab first in, I mean, first person to the, to the tanks wins. I, I, I would say so. Um, the, the, the thing is, uh, I mean, we're still a year or two ahead of any other competitor that's uh, in the space. Who's closest, would you think? There are some camera companies that are out of the subsea oil and gas industry in Norway. And they, they've been making these uh, fairly expensive cameras. Uh, so I'd say like they're second closest uh, to us. What's what's the name of one of them? Uh, for example, uh, Stingray or OptoScale. OptoScale. Interesting. OK, very cool. Um, talk to me a little bit more. You know, when you do a big raise, obviously you're raising to cover some amount of burn. So you obviously just completed a raise in your mind when you were raising. What are you projected? Like you want to cover and raise for burn for 18 months or 24 months or what? 18 to 24 months. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So you raised 10 million to cover 18 months. That means what you're burning like 400, 500 grand a month right now, something like that. Right. So we're, we're projected to raise at the end of 2020. Okay. Yeah. Which is about 18 months from now. I guess my question is, and then then you want to add in, uh, like, like some cushion at, um, like at the end. So, um, but, but your numbers are roughly correct. Okay. So you're calling say burning somewhere around 400 grand a month right now though. And you have your 10 million more than covers 18 months of runway. Right. And most of that is on engineers or what? It's, it's primarily headcount. Yeah. What's the team look like today? How many folks? So we have 30 people. Okay. They're Very healthy. Yeah. 12, 12 in San Francisco, 18 in Norway. Mm-hmm. Very good. All right. Let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? High output management. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, 
CEO of I have to come back to you on that. I, I don't have an answer. That's oh, okay. I, Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building your company? Hmm. You know, I, it's, it's not an online tool, but I, I use Evernote religiously uh, right. for everything I do. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Oh, I get uh, seven to eight hours. And what's your situation? Married, single, kids? Uh, single, uh, girlfriend. Okay. And how old are you? 27. Last question. What do you wish your 20-year-old self knew? Yeah, I wish I knew to come out to San Francisco earlier to learn what it's like to start a company and and yeah, just li live and breathe the startup life. So, guys, Aquabyte.ai serving three customers. They serve again these fish farms where they have anywhere between four and six massive tanks. They deploy twenty thousand dollar cameras in these tanks and then help these fisher uh, these fish pens essentially man manage things like sea lice and other critical elements of uh, the kind of fish health, right? As they bring them to market. Again, twenty seventeen launch date. They've raised thirteen point five million to date. Burning call it four hundred thousand dollars per month. Team of thirty folks. Too early to talk about churn and things like that, but they spent about a two million bucks to get their MVP built, uh, launching their first paid plans early this year in 2019 now looking obviously to scale up from there brighton thank you for taking us to the top yeah thank you